Hey guys, this is Torno. Today I wanted to talk about the top 10 things that I love about Marvel Strike Force. I know that sometimes I can be a little bit negative and I know that I don't want to ignore the fact that the game does have issues. There is a lot of things that I think can be really improved upon, but there's a reason that I'm so passionate about the game. It gives me hours of enjoyment every day and it's literally my dream job making content for this game. Everyone who's watching, you guys are the ones who are supporting this, but overall it's just a really, really fun game. I really enjoy it. I love making content. I love playing it. I love helping people it's just it's a bit of everything kind of all combined and I know that as I said I can be a bit critical at times specifically when it's the same issue over and over that we're kind of facing but I do want the best for the game and I do really enjoy it so I wanted to do like a more positive video I wanted to talk about the top 10 things that I love about Marvel Strike Force and why I'm playing it and why I really enjoy it so this is the list. Number 10, the community. Number 9, communication from the Scopely team. Number 8, being able to use most of your roster. Number 7, the dialogue and story. Number 6, the synergies between characters. Number 5, the character animations. Number 4, the new live PvP matchmaking. Number 3, the character model. Number 2, the reworking of old characters. And number 1, the unique kit designs. I know that some people might not agree with these things, but overall, I think that these are the main reasons I really like this game and it's why I've spent so much time on it and why I'm happy to like buy packs for new characters and stuff like that because I don't think there's really been a game besides maybe World of Warcraft that I've actually played this much and I really do enjoy it a lot. So first of all, number 10, the community. The Discord's communities that I've been a part of and just all been really amazing. I appreciate all the friends I've made there. I've made friends from all over the world, different people who I talk to about different things. Theory crafting with people has been one of the major highlights there. Just being able to find people who really enjoy the game and who have different ideas and what kind of teams they want to try out. And just kind of theory crafting, getting the nitty gritty down um, for how they can ac actually work together. And the alliances, the alliance system really promotes being close to your alliance as well which is great and alliance clusters are also super fun and a great home i really like being a part of an alliance cluster because not only do you have the 23 other people from your alliance but then you have all those other people who are a part of the wider community so you can kind of it's fun to be able to like you start in this little community talking with just the people in your alliance and then slowly expanding it out to the rest of the alliance and stuff the other thing is the content creator community is just amazing. Stuff like mobile gaming giving me shout outs, chatting with Wolverthor about different teams and stuff like that. Stuff like Valley Flying doing those awesome really hype videos and just overall the community around the content creation is really great. Even like the community of people who watch the content creators as well. Just being able to provide so much support for who their favorite content creator is and how much they enjoy kind of watching them. Number nine, the communication from the Scopely team. And huge shout out to both Cerebro and Zeeks for this. The weekly blogs are amazing, even if they don't always share new things. I forgot to add it on here, but the strike time. I don't think I've ever been uh, played a game that has so much kind of community involvement with like strike time and stuff like that not only kind of shouting out people from the community and the content creators from the community but also getting into talking with the actual people who are in control of the game like the developers the art studios and stuff like that even being able to give the content create the envoys the opportunity to be able to interview people like that like i interviewed um casey recently it's just really good and they're typically on top of issues very quickly and they let us know there is sometimes where a bit where they're a bit delayed when it's a more um it's a more difficult issue like for example when the emma frost stuff happened and i'm um, kind of getting to the compensation for that and stuff but i think that overall there's just kind of they are typically going to be on board with it. And if I bring them an issue, um, like a, a bug for a character, then typically these guys are going to take it to them straight away. And I've just never met a studio that's so open to discuss with their content creators. Being able to use most of your roster. War promotes being able to utilize a lot of teams. And I really like that. And it's not just kind of using the same teams over and over again, because you could try a different team against a different matchup, being able to learn the different matchups and stuff like that. Now, while Blitz is a drain, it also helps you kind of play with all your different teams as well. Obviously, the time commitment for Blitz is something that I do have an issue with, but being able to use all your characters in there is a lot of fun. Arena is very open for theory crafting different teams as well before the Black Order came along. But even now, if you don't have kind of big Black Order in your um, arena, 
you still have that option of being able to theorycraft different teams like do you want mr sinister do you want black bolt do you want emma frost who do you want to kind of have on there there is some obviously characters that are more set that you want on there like phoenix for example but overall there is a lot of kind of different matchups you can do there and it's the same with raids as well there's a lot of different raid teams you can bring in a lot of different characters that kind of do that my favorite one for this is real-time pvp after i did the matchmaking i didn't realize how fun real-time pvp is i played it a couple times on and off to kind of get the um the milestones the achievements out of the way but then once they have the actual matchmaking it's so much fun i really really enjoy it if you guys haven't done the real-time pvp make sure you get in there you have, can utilize your roster in there and stuff the dialogue and the story i think the characters are always very very well written and feel like they're comic book incarnations just brought to life interactions between characters are always on key and you can tell that the team loves what they do the storyline is going in a really cool direction switching from ultimus to doom being the big bad and if you want story in dark dimension let scopely know that was something that we covered in my interview with Casey. Um, they were talking about, I, I mentioned about having story in Dark Dimension. He's like, they weren't so sure about it. I think that it would be a really great idea to kind of have some kind of storyline to go there. But let them know down in the comments and I'll pass it along to Cerebro as well to make sure that they know that if you guys want that in there. I think that overall, some of my favorite storylines um, were like the Totem Blob event. I really loved that. That was probably my favorite one. I really liked the kind of interaction between Totem Blob, and it felt like they were really brought to the um, brought to brought to life in um, in the story. I really like the synergies between characters as well. There's characters that feel really fun to use together because of various synergies. Whether that's more clear synergies like Cull Obsidian encountering people who attack Thanos or like um, Iron Man and um, Captain America. I really like that Iron Man has a different animation for his ultimate, uh, sorry, for his special if you've got Captain America on your team. Or a more indirect um, synergies such as like Baron Zemo ability blocking early for Hela to be able to spread it. Uh, spell indirect wrong there um being able to ability block early for hella to be able to spread it out and stuff like that like carnage and hella working with people with debuffs um the people who kind of like take like I, one that was more subtle was baron zemo and carnage baron zemo uses his ultimate uh sorry he uses his passive on spawn which can kill a hella um a hella summon and then carnage gets his um his passive from that is a passive turn meter so that's kind of more less like it's not clear but i really like the kind of theory crafting behind that theory crafting how different characters will work together in different modes and stuff number five the character animation some of the animations in this game are just beautiful the finishing moves are always really well done even for something you won't necessarily see all the time like for example thanos's snap alt uh the empowered then i'll snap it's something that you don't see very often but when you see it it's just so mind-bogglingly awesome mind-bogglingly boggin i can't pronounce that word properly at the moment <laughs> and it really makes you feel like you're using that character not someone who just kind of looks like them and they're getting even better with the new patches for example swarm and zemo have some really cool animations and dr octopus's tentacles just the kind of they were talking about it in strike time about how they kind of they're all individually animated, I believe they were saying, and it's just like a really new, unique thing, and I think it's really cool. Number four, the new live PvP matchmaking. It's super duper fun to be able to quickly jump into a live PvP pvp match against someone random um now sometimes people are just like quitting straight away or not playing it properly um which is fine i just kind of pass on to the next one but when you come up against someone who's actually trying it's really really fun and extra rewards was great but even after those extra rewards were done and i finished them i still kept playing it because it was just so fun the draft is interesting to see how you can kind of outsmart the opponents sometimes the whole match is kind of decided in draft and sometimes it's more decided in the gameplay and trying new and unique pair pairings of characters to see how they work well together is super fun number three the character models zemo is single-handedly my favorite model i'm actually thinking of doing a video on the top 10 characters that i like the models of in marvel strike force if you want to hear, hear about that kind of let me know down in the comments because i really like a lot of these models I don't think that there's a single one in the game that I dislike the model for. Generally, they hit way above what I expect. Like, I did not expect Zemo to look this beautiful, and he's just amazing. 
and they're surprisingly really high quality for a game that you don't necessarily see the characters up close or anything like that but even when you do get to see them like for example this Zemo one here it just looks amazing they're a unique blend of like the comics and the MCU with their own scopely spin on it. Scarlet Witch is kind of a key example of that. And some really cool things like Emma's diamond form or Zemo's sword. This things like that just really stand out to me. The reworking of old characters. It's just amazing that they kind of breathe life into these old characters all the time. Bringing characters up to date is amazing, especially when red stars are a thing. If you roll a random red star and you get a seven red star winter soldier, for the last year and a half, you've probably been like, oh, this is just trash. But now you actually have an opportunity to be able to utilize that in a way that's going to be really cool. Some really fun reworks that went in unexpected directions as well, like Thor. I did not expect Thor to do the amazing stuff that he does later with like his passive and charging up, which it makes sense from him as a character, but I didn't expect them to kind of put that into the game, which was really cool. Um, and it brings us into um, a game that might get stale if the only thing that's happening is new characters. If they didn't rework old characters as well as new, adding new characters, you're kind of like, you have to rely on the new characters. But when they like breathe life into like the Avengers or something like that, you're like, oh, this team used to be awful, but now it's really cool. And it adds to the whole using your full roster because your full roster isn't completely awful now. Characters can go from zero to amazing, which is really good. I know that some type people get frustrated by that, but I really like it. And it doesn't devalue new characters while trying to achieve their goals. While the new characters are usually still really strong, some of them even add to these existing reworks to kind of bring them up to having a full team kind of thing, like how Zemo um, buffs Winter Soldier. But it also means that new characters are really good, like for example, the, um, the Black Order and stuff, who were a completely new team. Um, besides Thanos, they are still really great characters. And the number one is just like unique kit designs for the characters. It really captures who the character is. Like, uh, take Sinister for example. He's a character who's about like stealing DNA and cloning and stuff like that. And they, I didn't expect them to make it so clear as to who he was in the game via this whole, by his kit. Like, for example, how he created Strife and stuff. I didn't expect them to make it so that he was being able to make those kinds of things in the game. And it utilizes the source materials to build what the other cat what the characters do. So being able to pull from the comics and from the MCU or the other films, bringing those all together to be able to create the characters is really good. And they're not just characters aren't just carbon copied power creep versions of others characters either. Like for example, Zemo is a very unique character and i really like him um his passive is really unique being able to counter the minions and stuff even if you get to someone like um like electro is really cool dr octopus is a really unique take on a character that is has unique um unique mechanics as well Lots of the very unique uh, mechanics are built into different characters as well. For example, you've got Sinister, who's going to clone someone and take them from your team onto your, uh, from their, their team onto your team. You've got Phoenix, whose whole kit is around dying and then coming back stronger, which is just like the embodiment of a Phoenix. You've got Dr. Octopus, who's there creating more, bringing more Sinister Six into the fight, but also outsmarting his opponents and just kind of supporting his team. I think it's just very unique in the way each character plays. There's not very many characters who play all the same. And there's fun callbacks to who a character is as well built into their kits. For example, Mordo healing from Mystic dying being a reference to his campaign in the post credit scene in Doctor, uh, Doctor Strange where he says about too many sorcerers, which is the name of his passive, and he starts stealing other sorcerers' powers. I think that there's a really cool callback to that. But that's the end. Those are the things that I really love about this game. And a reminder, this game is super fun and I really enjoy it. I realize that there is a lot of things that need improving. Improving stuff like someone's going to mention about the economy. There's a lot of stuff that can be improved in the economy, but that doesn't mean that I devalue new characters that are really unique coming out. Let's share our favorite things about Marvel Strike Force down below in the comments and try and keep them positive. I don't want someone to come in. I know that there's someone sitting there watching this video who's like, oh, I really hate this game. I don't know why I'm even playing it anymore. If you're really unhappy with the game, you can quit at any time or just take a break. Remember that it is a game 
but try and think about the things that you enjoy about the game. Why have you spent this long playing the game if you hate it? Obviously, there's likely a reason, whether that's community, whether that's the, you like the characters, whether that's just Marvel all, all together kind of draws you in. Think about the positives. But anyway, I hope you guys had a great day. Um, I'm actually really happy with this video and I really like um, kind of talking about the positives of the game. I know that I can be very critical, but I want to make sure that I talk about the positives as well. That's it for today. Have a great day and goodbye.